Hi, I'm Steve from Alt Alt, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a bearing swap on this race face trace hub using the Alt Alt hub and suspension bearing press system. This hub has an over axle design, which is really common in both front and rear hubs. This over axle hub design is characterized by having two bearings installed from either end. Once those bearings are installed, they hold the internal axle captive thanks to these stepped features on the axle. Before putting tools to parts, there's a few things that you should consult before doing any bearing swap. The first thing to do is to visit the Alt Alt website and download all of the instructional diagrams for your bearing swap. For the race face trace hub, the four diagrams will be listed under hub over axle. You might want to pause the video to see the diagram names. Then go to the how-to page for general bearing removal and installation tips. Pay close attention to the concept of press, center, leverage, and clearance. It's important to keep this in mind for every bearing removal and install. Lastly, and most importantly, go find the service documents from your manufacturer. I found the following document under Race Faces Support and Documentation section. There's an assembly schematic which shows how all the parts in the hub fit together. And then there's a service manual which explains important information for disassembly and assembly of the hub. I'm going to be using these documents throughout today's swap. And I know what some of you are already thinking. How can we adhere to the instructions set by the manufacturer if we're using different tools and different methods? Well, what's important is that we press and leverage on the same surfaces that the manufacturer recommends. The method for swapping bearings in this hub can be used for other manufacturers' hub, front hubs, rear hubs, but watch out for parts that may impede the removal of bearings like surclips or threaded parts. And you'll be able to double check that by referring to the manufacturer's instructions and schematic drawings. All right, let's get to replacing bearings on this race face trace hub. If you look at the instructions from race face, they say to remove the disc side bearing by striking the axle with a plastic mallet. Well, I don't like striking, using the striking motion of a mallet because if you're not used to it, you can cause damage. Like if you're in the situation, not with this hub, but if you are in the situation where you've forgotten a circlip or a threaded part or something like that, you would never know you've got a problem until you've already caused some damage. So I like using a pressing motion. That way you can apply as much force as you want to and it feels like a much more controlled motion. So we are going to use the same surfaces, which is press up against this axle and leverage against this side of the hub. Um, race face doesn't exactly say what surface to use to leverage up against, but we're going to use common sense and we're going to leverage up against the, the six bolt disc brake mount right here. And uh, so let's get picking some pieces. Okay, up against the axle, we're going to use a drift. That'll just press up against this end of the axle. Uh, for centering the tool, we're going to center inside of the axle. So we'll choose some pilots that fits in there nice. We're going to actually use two pilots. We're going to use one at this end. We're going to use the one at that end to keep things really stable. And then we're going to use some O-rings to keep the pilots in place so they don't shift around. And then it's a point of some, using some leveraging. So we're going to leverage up against this. So we'll use the sleeve six to leverage up the, against the disc brake mount. Now here we have the disc brake removed from the hub, but you don't need to if you're using the sleeve six. This surface here can just fit right up against the screw heads and that's fine. The sleeve six works with the universal step. So this part fits up against the sleeve six. Um, this is too loose. 
So flip the step over and you have a much tighter fit. Choose the tighter fit. Now the nice part about this is we're leveraging with this tool, but when that bearing comes out with the axle, you're gonna need some clearance space. So the sleeve six has good clearance space in here. And it's just a matter of grabbing some threaded parts. Here we'll choose the handle for the pressing side and the stud stop for the other side. And let's just assemble the tool. Thread the handle on, nice and easy. The drift does the pressing, the pilot does the centering. Hold the O-ring in place. Install the hub onto the stud. There we go. Now you can see that this end flops around a little bit in the other side, so let's just center that up with another pilot. There, that already feels really secure. Okay, put on the leveraging pieces. And then finally the stud stop. Now the stud stop goes, it goes on at an angle. And then when you straighten it out, it locks into the threads. So put it as close as you can and then tighten up the other end so that the stud stop stays nice and perpendicular to the stud. There, now it's just a matter of twisting. Uh, there's Great. often a loud cracking noise. There we go. That's it. First bearing and the axle. All right, let's remove the second bearing in this hub. That's the drive side bearing here. Race face recommends taking the axle that you just pulled out, turning it around, reinserting it into the bearing and then using a mallet to strike on the end of the axle, driving out the bearing. Well, we're not gonna be doing that today. So instead we'll use the same surfaces that are recommended by race face, but we'll use the tool to do it instead. So, to press up against the back side of the bearing, we're going to use a drift and we're going to use a drift larger than the bearing inner ring, but smaller than the bearing outer ring. So that will work fine. And then to center the tool on the bearing, we'll use a pilot. So pick a pilot that fits inside of the bearing. This pilot works. Uh, we're going to try using the long pilot. Uh, using the long pilot whenever you can, with if you don't have a clearance issue, is a good idea. Um, specifically for wider bearings, having the surface contact against a longer pilot is just better for stability. So we're going to try and use the long pilot. I'm pretty sure we've got clearance, good clearance here. So then we're going to need an O-ring to hold the pilot in place. And then we're going to need a leveraging piece up against the drive side of the hub. Well, once again, the sleeve six fits really good and it's got great clearance for the bearing. So we're going to use that. We're going to use the step as well. We need a handle on the pressing side and we're going to use the stud stop on the leverage side. So let's start assembling the tool. Wait a minute. There's the bearing. We're going to have a problem because we can't get the handle to where the the drift is going to be pressing up against the back side of the bearing. I'm going to have to use a spacer. Excellent. Let's do that. Spacer. Drift for pressing. Pilot for centering. O-ring to hold the pilot in place. Now let's install that inside the hub. Great. Next, we're going to need a leveraging piece. Great. 
and assemble the set stop and we're good again. There's the second bearing. All right, after removing the old bearings and cleaning out the boards with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure there's nothing in there, it's time to install the first bearing. Raceface says to install the drive side bearing first. Install the bearings one at a time so the drive side goes in first and gets installed fully seated before proceeding to the second bearing. As for the bearing, Raceface says to install the bearing with the red seal pointing outwards. Yep, that's right. The instructions say red seal. I called Raceface and sure enough, SNS bearings with a green seal are the OEM standard, so don't be surprised if your hub has green seals. You're to install this bearing with the green seal facing outwards. As for pressing, Raceface says to press this bearing pressing on both inner and outer rings at the same time. So we'll have to consider that. Grease. Raceface suggests the bore of the bearing bore is to have no grease, yet the inner bearing ring or uh, grease the axle before putting the bearing on. So grease on the inside, no grease on the outside. So let's get that done. Grease both sides of the axle because when installing the second bearing, you're actually not going to be able to get to this very well. So grease both parts. There we go. Green seal facing out. All right, let's start choosing some pieces. First, pressing piece to fit over the axle and up against the bearing inner rings. So the over axle long will fit over top and as recommended we're going to press both rings at the same time. So use the flat side of the over axle long. There. Fits nicely over the axle, lines up to the bearing outer rings. Also because the end is open we're going to use a drift on the other end to press up against the over axle long. So here's your pressing pieces. Now on the other side of the part we need a leveraging piece. So what are we going to leverage against? Well race face recommends leveraging against the opposite side bearing bore. It's going to be over top of an axle so we need an over axle drift and we're going to use the short one on the other side. Now, very important, Raceface says that when you install this into the hub, you need to use a piece that has a relief here so that this step on the axle doesn't interfere during installation. That's very important. So we're gonna use the over axle short on the opposite side. And once again, we're going to use a, a drift up against the opposite side of the over axle short. So we've got pressing pieces, we've got leveraging pieces, now we need some centering pieces. Well, let's center on the inside of the axle. Once again, that's a pilot. We're gonna use two of them. We'll use one here, one here. We're gonna need O-rings to keep those pilots in place. Then we're gonna need, on the pressing side, we'll use the handle. On the leveraging side, we'll use the stud stop. Let's assemble the tool. Grab the stud. First thing to do is to put the pilot in place. This pilot is going to sit 
inside of the axle here. So we need a little bit of room for handle, etc. So let's get that inside the axle. There we go. Let's put the over axle long here, flat side towards the bearing to press both rings. Then we need a drift and then a handle. Those are the pressing and centering pieces on that side. Okay, no grease into the bore drive side. There we go. Now on this side, let's get another pilot in there so that this stays centered. Like that. That's good. And then this is our leveraging piece. And remember, we're putting it in with the relief side towards the axle. This fits inside the opposite empty bearing bore. That's what we're leveraging up against, and it has clearance for the axle. Put the drift on to press up against the over axle short, and then once again with the stud stop. There we go. Now let's press that bearing in. Just stops dead. That means the bearing's in. There we go. Stop. After installing the first bearing, don't get all excited to take the tool apart to discover your handiwork because to install the second bearing is actually really simple from this point. Remember, we installed this first bearing by pressing up against both bearing rings. That's great. And we were leveraging up against the empty bearing bore on this side. Well, to install the second bearing, it's a matter of now leveraging up against the same bearing, the first bearing, the same way as when we pressed it in. So these tool pieces can stay where they are. All you have to do is remove these pieces. And before we were leveraging using the recessed side of the over axle small, now we're going to press the bearing in, pressing against both inner and outer ring at the same time. So remember that was that axle was greased from installing the first bearing. So maybe put a little bit of extra grease on the bearing and then install this bearing over the axle, green seal facing outwards. Slide that into the bore and install the over axle short pressing against both bearing rings now it also centers on the axle like that so here we go with the stud stop turn the opposite side and now we're pressing in the second bearing leveraging it against the first bearing this is what race face requests so it's just a matter of tightening. And when it stops, you're done. There we go. Give the axle a spin, nice and smooth. No lateral play. There. Successful bearing install. Hey, before you go, let me know in the comments below what other hubs you'd like me to do demos on. And thanks.